Is it filming now or what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sunova Berg. I'm from the Faroe Islands. And when I was about 13 years old, I started thinking about what my sexuality was, like most people do back then. But I knew that as soon as I spoke up about all of this, that people were going to start pointing fingers at me or that I would be rejected by my friends and my peers. And the way I say, the reason why I think that to be gay, or I thought that to be gay, oh wait, I still think it. My name is Jala and I come from Ireland. And um, I just want to tell my story about, uh, about myself. Um, I'm a lesbian and I uh, discovered that, I'm not exactly sure how, but I discovered it when I was um, 14, I believe. Uh, then I moved from the capital to a very small city in the Faroe Islands, uh, 1,500 people. A very homophobic place. And then I came to a uh, class with this one guy who was always talking down to me, always bullying me. And uh, there were, however, the issue of my sexuality, when I became aware of it, that it was something that I could not discuss with uh, my family. Uh, it, for me, it was very simple to, to realize that I, I was not attracted to men, I was attracted to women. I was basically asexual growing up. I never had boyfriends or crushes on boys or, or anything like that. I was very afraid to come out to that community because I didn't want to give them another reason to bully me, another reason to look down on me. And that was a very tough time for me because I felt like that was just a place where people could torture me. And so, yes, I, I, I never considered suicide per se, but I saw no hope. I saw no hope in the world and I understand how someone could see coming from that background that there is no possibility of changing. I, I was different to, to all the other girls. I had, I, I walked in a slightly more butch way. I, I have, I have a lower voice than, than many girls do, and those were. I began to kind of fit into a stereotype of of, of what it is to be um, to be a lesbian. I didn't realize it at the time, uh, but this was, of course, a product of where they the environment that they had grown up in, which was that society, which was very homophobic. We're talking about Argentina, uh, by the way. Uh, my town was Mendoza. And that was just, it was such a small community where everybody knew everything about you. So, and it was just so tough because I knew that if I came out to that community, they would, everybody would know. And they would probably just down on me and just find some way to pick on me and look at me like, oh my god, that's the lesbian in this community, she's so weird and stuff like that. And uh, there came a point where I felt that I was a total lie. My life was a lie, nobody knew me. Um, I went to an all boys school where the worst thing that you could be was uh, gay or even suspected of being gay or even if people knew that you weren't gay but you were too soft or too um, yeah there were some things that you weren't supposed to be so but I was just I just really didn't want to be stereotyped and ridiculed and noticed as different I just wanted to have, to have a normal life that I deserved and, but the thing is I didn't see myself as normal and I mean why would I <laughs> to it's not normal um, in the eyes of many to be, to be gay. It's not the average, it's not the average thing. So that made me stay in the closet for, for yeah, until I was around 16, 16, 17. Uh, and then when I finally came out, I realized that I had my mom, I had my dad, and I had all these 
friends who actually ended up loving and supporting me. And it, it was just this great feeling, like telling people who I really was, not having this fake person, a person that I pretended to be. And now I'm happy. Back home, everybody knows me like I am and not who I pretend to be. You will meet in your life people who will just... I had friends, for instance, who stopped talking to me. And they didn't talk to me for maybe 10 years when they found out that I was gay. Uh, some of them came back after that much time. Uh, but... Uh, anyways, what I was trying to say is that it's important that we speak up because that's how we change. Not only ourselves we feel more secure, but we change others. We do change others by speaking up. And I'm, I'm never going to say that there are not days where you don't still wish that you were part of this 95% of the world that you don't wish that you, were, that you were straight because there are going to be days like that for I'd say the vast majority of people. Only many won't admit it. So, I mean, it would be very, very important to, to keep your convictions at heart at all times in order to get through. To get through those times that might not be so easy, to get through any kind of shame or regret or anger that you might be feeling at the fact that you're different. So if, if you are in the closet and if you are afraid to come out, just grasp the opportunity to come out. People will love you and respect you. Sure, there will be some idiots out there who will get down on you and not respect you. But for that one idiot, there will be at least 50 people who love you and respect you for who you are. It's just, don't be afraid. It will be alright. Just come out. You will have some tough years, but it gets better. It absolutely gets better and you have to believe in that. You have to. No matter what you're feeling now, uh, it's, it's only going to get better when you when you're able to confide in, in other people, but also the most important thing that you can 